push in front of you guys, just the New Zealand World Skeletons injury at training. Um, can you just outline what, what happened there and um, what, what the chat around the team is about, about whether he might be good to go? Uh, yeah, Will pulled up a bit short of training yesterday, but um, yeah, still named, um, ready to go, and he's just gone, gone for a scan today. And as far as we know, the medical staff will um, assess that, and then, but yeah, from our end, he's still um, named and ready to go. Confident, you know, the mood in the team's calm with the leadership group, um, no, no panic, I imagine, with Eddie um, there controlling things. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, we got a really strong leadership group that's been working hard over the last few weeks, and yeah, um, everyone's feeling pretty confident. Like, um, Slips is going to play. I think he's the third Australian playing his fourth World Cup this weekend. Can you just tell him just how crucial he's been, just the mental for your career and what he brings to this sort of world, this squad? Yeah, massive. Not only for me, but for every front row. I think in Australia as well. You know, he's a huge inspiration. Um, playing in four World Cups and. The quality of player he is is just we're just lucky to have him in the squad still. And for me personally, you know, growing up he was someone I idolised. So to be able to rub shoulders with him every day and watch him go about his business is, is good enough for me. You know, I don't really pester him too much, but I just sort of watch him go about um, you know what he does at training and try to just take as much as possible for him. It's going out last week, being able to match it with the Georgians. How much confidence does give this four pack to really take to a Fijian side that's going to be good plays with that powerful style of rugby? Yeah, massive because um, you know we've been working on our set piece a lot, of training. We've been training really hard, and you know it's something that we're going to really uh, look to use as a weapon in the coming weeks, and especially this weekend against Fiji. Like uh, James Slipper made his Test debut in 2010. How old were you, and where were you then? 2010, I was 12 years old. <laughs> um, yeah, I was in probably in public school. Um, yeah, just watching on TV with my dad as well. Uh, have you? Reminded him of that fact that you were, you know, what early, early high school at that point when he was making his test debut, just to rub in how old he is. Uh, I don't want to make him feel any older than he already is, but yeah, I have mentioned it a couple of times. There's a couple of running jokes about um, about his age, but mate, he's still, you know, um, playing some of his best footy, and that's what's impressive about him. You know, he's a loose head like you, or uh, well, predominantly he's a loose head. Uh, we just spoke to Angus about how impressive it is. Slipper's ability to switch across to tight head. Have you given any thought to, to upskilling yourself to be able to do something like that? Yeah, I have. Um, you know, I've spoken to Slips and um, Hats, our scrum coach, as well, about um, the possibility of long term um, upskilling uh, as a front rower, and it's definitely something that I've thought about. And we have spoken about with the coaches and Slips as well. And you know, what better what better way to do it than with him um, in the in the squad there at our disposal. <clears throat> like, um, it wasn't that long ago where you sort of weren't even sort of mentioned as someone coming over on this tour. What, what were your expectations when you came over here about what game time you might get, what role you might play? Um, I think for me it was just about being ready. Um, you know, I've got two world class loose heads in, in front of me in, in belly and slips, so for me it was just about being ready and if called upon to do the job, then being in their best condition. Um, physically, mentally, and and all that. So, you know, there was no expectation. It was just um, trying to be as ready as possible whenever called upon. Do you feel that you've learned stuff already in this short period? And, and what what sort of things have you learned? Yeah, I think um, with the you know caliber of coaching that we have at the moment, it's it's hard not to learn. Um, we've got you know Eddie there drilling us all the time about just just little things like habits, training habits. Um, you know things that translate off the field onto the field. So I think I'm learning a lot about um, how to go about my my training and um, just trying to be better every day. That's what he keeps hounding me about. Is how, are you getting better every day and what are you doing? So he's just trying to instill those good habits into us. Like uh, James Slipper seems super intense whenever we speak to him. Is there another side to him? What's he like with you one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, he's, uh, he's a great bloke, um, you know, he obviously very, very experienced, so away from, away from all of this serious stuff, he's a very calm and, and uh, you know, really not quiet, but just goes about his business, you know what I mean? Um, someone with that amount of experience, he's been there, he's done it time and time again, so like I said, he's just, he's just there, um, you know, uh, going about his business, uh, allowing us young blokes to just watch him go about his business and then hopefully learn from him. Can I ask about, your, you talked about being 12 and your dad um, 
You, you, your dad was a rugby player, right, um, back in Wollongong. Can you talk maybe a bit about your upbringing in the game with him and his kind of passion for it? Yeah, like, um, you know, when we were younger, we had my dad who was a, a rugby player and, and a coach as well, so he coached me and my young brother and all that when we were younger. And, you know, it was massive for us to um, play at the local rugby club when we were in the Shamrocks down in Wollongong. Um, it was a, a massive uh, family vibe down there. All the families are really close. They still are. Like my mum and dad bring some of their family friends along to the Brumbies games when they can. And it's just a really good, it was a really good upbringing, um, you know, coming into the into this sort of setup. You know, it's, it's cool to reflect on those times where, you know, we'd go down on a Saturday afternoon at Ocean Park and see my dad play footy and also coach. And we're all down there, um, you know, dressed in the colours of the team and supporting as a family. And are they over here? And what is you being here <coughs> to them? Yeah, mum and dad are over here now. I'm actually going to catch up with them after this for lunch. Um, so, yeah, it's special. You know, this this is why I do. This is why um, you know why I do what I do because I want to um, give them moments like this where they can see um, you know myself and you know we're lucky enough to have my younger brother also in the NRL. So it's just it's moments like this that really make me um, proud uh, as a as a person. You mentioned your brother, um, and also like Wollongong is predominantly a rugby league town. Like, did you was it always about rugby for you, or did you um, ever think about taking the rugby league path, like Aaron? Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> we all played uh, rugby union when we were younger, and me and Aaron both played league as well. My older brother played union; he still does as well when in Shamrock. So, I think um, you know we both did both, and then um, eventually went on our own path. But Aaron was always in the junior development setups for, for the league through the Dragons and I was um, able to do that but then chose to go to Nudgee College in year 10, lucky enough to get an opportunity to go there and that was where, um, you know, the, the, the whole rugby union pathway started for me. Um, like about a year ago you were in the classroom teaching, how does a, you know, nerves of a World Cup cauldron compare to a, you know, classroom full of naughty kids? Yeah, it's, it's pretty different. I, um, it, it's just cool, though, to, to think, you know, about where I was 12 months ago and, and um, now being able to be here and, and do stuff like this, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. But I guess now it's about um, turning it into, you know, uh, uh, what's the, the job that's at hand. And I think it's important to, to normalise that now, and I, and I think I'm starting to do that, which is good. And it's just all about going out there and doing the best job for the team and the country. Do you have any stories of the kids who probably had you a year ago and are now watching you play for the Wallabies? Can you share some stories of those kids at the schools you taught at and the support you received back home? Yeah, I still talk to the teachers I used to work with and they always send me funny messages about um, what the kids are up to and that, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, I still remember my last day when I was teaching, they all knew I was going to um, quit teaching and go down to, to train with the Brumbies. And, I actually put up uh, one of my one of my games on the on the big screen because all the kids were asking me and they were all like criticising me like because they saw <laughs> they saw me walking around the field and, and we're we're criticising how it was how it was going but no nah, it was it was pretty cool to um, to share that and then yeah still be in contact with a few a few people at the school the the principal who who I worked for actually sent me a message the other day which was pretty nice. Uh, little quirky one. Uh, Tom Hooper the other day was saying that when he's dogging the training, Eddie tells him to run as hard as he does to the Oberon bottle up. Um, what does Eddie say to you to motivate you? Um, <laughs> lots of things. Um, <coughs> trying to think of what's uh, sensible to say right now. Um, no, he just reinforces, uh, you know, this, my stature, I think, and, and uses that as a <laughs> A bit of motivation, but yeah, it's 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 that in many different ways. You know what he's like. He's very good with his words and motivation. So yeah, he's awesome. About your stature, do you get sledged by mates about being a brick shit house? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, I think there's other nicknames as well that have come in um, and taken over as well, which is pretty good. But uh, yeah, it's all it's all good fun. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit down the road, but do you plan on being a teacher after school? Uh, after, <laughs> after, <laughs> after playing with the Wallabies? Uh, I'll have to cross that bridge when it comes to it, but um, yeah, a big line if I said so what I hadn't thought about um, the opportunities that, that could come from it. Yeah. Um, Lalakai, um, 
think James is not the player about observers <coughs> play for the Wallabies this way because it's about defence. Uh, Wales had to make 250 odd tackles or so. Uh, is that what you guys are expecting to have to tackle for your lives? Yeah, I think um, you look at the game they played against Wales last week, I think it was like the most metres um, in the comp. So uh, their back line's really strong and, and even their forwards. So it's definitely a big focus this week. We've been um, working on our defence and just trying to nullify the opportunities we give them with the ball. So um, that's a big focus. Um, and I think uh, this week the backs are looking forward to to working on our defence because we know it's going to be a big part and, and they can expose teams out wide. So, um, yeah, it's a big one this week. Do you feel like you've done more work on defence uh, this past week than before? Uh, look, we're always trying to improve our defence. Like, um, obviously, the run into the World Cup, um, we, we've been trying to improve in, in little ways, but I think this week definitely because we know how much of a threat Fiji is with the ball and um, the way we've been defending. So we, we want to put pressure on them and, and that's through defence. So, yeah, I think the boys um, know that this is a big game and you can see after training the boys are doing extras in, in defending and, and working on our tackles and, and just working as a collective because um, that's that's what Fiji is looking for, a broken line and, and we can't give them that. So um, that, that, that's what we've been focusing on. And there's a bit of talk that Josh to a saver might play a 12, but Dragger on the wing. How do you tackle a Fijian player? Uh, he's always looking to offload. Is, is there a difference between trying to tackle these guys as to other uh, players around the world? Uh, I think every time you go into a tackle, you've you got to have the mindset of you know, trying to stop them there. But obviously, as everyone knows, Fijians are really hard to tackle, so, and they're, they're made out of stone. Um, so again, we just got to get numbers around the ball and we know they love to offload. So if we can stop them in their tracks and, and get two in that tackle and, and then uh, try and get the, the next defensive person uh, around the ball for the offloads, that, that's a big focus. But um, whoever they put at 12 or winger or seven or, or prop, doesn't matter. They're going to be hard to tackle. So um, that, we're, we're working on that and we're, we're ready. Lolokai, how much do you owe um, to your time playing here in France, who was at Bayonne for a couple of years. How much do you owe to that, to being here now with Australia and the World Cup? Yeah, massive. Um, I think I was 19, just turned 19 when I when I moved over here to play for Bayonne. And um, it was huge, I think, um, you know, playing with the likes of Mark Chisholm, Jared Kothoko and, and, and Scott Spedding and stuff like that. When I was young, um, great experience and, and to play physical footy um, but I, but again I also thought um, it taught me you know what I wanted and, and this was the dream and to come back and to play for for the Wallabies so I guess um, if anything it, it, it made my motivation even stronger and and um, I'm really grateful for that opportunity and that experience but um, it just made me realize you know what what I wanted to do in my career and um, so that, that was one thing when I came here, I wanted to go back and, and, and end up here, which was great. Uh, and and Daryl Gibson's the defence coach, I think, of Fiji. Um, has there been any kind of exchanges with him? And, and he was influential in your career and, and, and having your guitars too, right? Yeah, definitely. He, um, he, he brought me back to the Waratahs, which was great. From um, I was playing ITM Cup in New Zealand and got a call from Daryl Gibson um, asking if I wanted to come back. and. You know, I took that opportunity and I'm, I'm very grateful to him and um, there's, no, I haven't spoken to him for a while now so um, it'll be good to see him after the game, hopefully, you know, um, we can we can share a beer together and, and, and talk about, I guess, the journey and, and, and just discuss what's been going on because um, he was coaching Bay Clooney, I think, last year and, and he's a part of the Fiji squad now so hopefully he's not talking about me to their backs. <laughs> Um, look, how's Samu Karibi going at training last week? He obviously played 40 and then got hooked, so that was a bit of a management there. Do you expect bigger minutes from him this week? Yeah, he's been going great. Obviously, we all know what he can do, and, and when he's fully fit and firing, um, he's one of the best 12s in the world, so it's great to you know to be training with him and to learn off him and and to just um, you know exchange ideas and, and the way we see the game. So, yeah, he played 40, and he's been coming back from injury, so... Uh, he, he's moving well at training, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on um, I'm on the bench, so I'm just uh, 
just waiting for, for when I get the call and you know, um, yeah, I think he'll he'll be ready to play more than forty minutes this week. There's obviously unlucky players in every selection. Andrew Kellaway's missed out on a couple of how's he responded around the group to missing out on those? Yeah, great. We we put a big emphasis on team first here, so um, you know, it's I've been in, in this um, environment for a while now and I, I haven't played, you know, many games and you you're obviously disappointed, you take half an hour to yourself and, and I think he's done that really well. You know, you look at Izzy as well and, and Jorgo and, and stuff like that who really want to play and, and they're showing that at training. So, um, obviously disappointed, but the way they're training, you know, they're obviously putting the team first and, and we can all see that and um, I'm sure when they get the opportunity, they'll be ready. Sorry, Blake, just... Um uh, the school where where the kids gave you a hard time. What name and where where is that school? Um, it's called Edgware School in uh, Helston Park in Sydney. It's a um, behaviour school, so a school for specific purposes. Um, troubled kids, kids that um, were um, disadvantaged and had poor home lives and stuff like that. So it was a really good experience to be there and um, just exposed to a different kind of um, environment in the classroom. Is that primary or, or secondary? Uh, it was seven to twelve, ranging from like a you know many many types of um, learning learning levels and stuff like that. So yeah. what were you teaching? Um, so <clears throat> I'm trained in physical education, um, but I can teach anything from seven to ten. Um, so at that school, it was a um, multi um, multi learning um, facility. So you just create programs for kids depending on what their interests were because a lot of them are coming from you know uh, in and out of juvie um, and you know a lot of them hadn't had a lot of uh, schooling in the, in the periods before they came to our school so it was more so about um, tailoring the programs to the interests of the students. Any kids you had a particular bond with and maybe stayed in touch with or getting back in touch now you're all of them? Um, no, not necessarily because, like I said, it was, it was a different environment, so you can't really um, attach yourself that that closely to the students. It was more so about um, you know just being a, being there and providing an environment for them to come to learn and, and get away from whatever was going on outside their lives. Was that working in a school like that um, a particular choice for you, or was it as a young teacher that was the first opportunity or something you you grew to love? Yeah, well, I didn't even know those kind of schools existed, so it was it was pretty funny actually. I applied for a different job as a teaching assistant because I was still at uni at the time, and um, I applied online through whatever the online um, website was. And the principal at the school, he was a supporter of um, Southern Districts at the time, and he rang me and he said, "Hey, mate, um, you know, I saw your application. I know your name through the rugby club. Um, you, I think you'd be better suited to this role." Um, and then he got me in for the day and, and showed me around and then the rest is history. So, shout out to Rod at Edgeware School. <laughs> uh, did you do a degree or what was the training for that? Yeah, so I'm uh, graduated in uh, secondary health and physical education. Um, did my degree at Wollongong Uni and finished that um, in the last year before. Sorry, you're probably sick of talking about it. But do you actually think that having a career outside of rugby uh, and now getting the opportunity later has kind of made you a more rounded person? But do you also think it's kind of helped uh, with your career in rugby? I wouldn't say more well rounded. Um, no, I think uh, at the time um, I do I do give credit to the to the job that I had because it, it gave me the opportunity to um, you know be appreciative of what I had at the time. You know, I had a great a great work environment there at the school and, and I really enjoyed what I did. And that allowed me to um, have other things going on other than rugby because at the time I was playing at Southern Districts and uh, we weren't going so well results wise and stuff like that. And there were, you know, um, aspirations to go higher. But at the time I was pretty content with um, the job that I had. So I think it, it gave me a lot of um, clarity and, and all that with, with what I was doing at the time. and I. Yeah, I think I, that, I credit that to where I am today.